the video and try the question on your own before moving on. Our first step in solving this question is to draw a free body diagram. Now it might be confusing as to which object we should choose when drawing the free body diagram because we have a birdhouse and then we have several ropes. But it's all based on the question. The question is asking us to find the tension in each cable. So it's most advantageous to choose the object to which all the cables are attached. So if we look at this point right here, all three cables are attached to that point. So it would be best to draw the free body diagram for that point. So that's what we're going to do. Now perhaps the most obvious force is the gravitational force or the weight of the birdhouse that is directed downward. And we can label that force as being mg. In order to support that downward acting force, we need forces pointing upward. And those are going to be the tensions, T1 and T2. We've labeled their arrowheads in this direction to indicate that those forces are acting upward. Now let's add some detail to this free body diagram that includes information about the angles. Now the question stated that the angle here on the left is 60 degrees and the one on the right is 30 degrees. What's important to recognize is that the beam to which the ropes are attached to is parallel to an imaginary line that I've drawn here. And you might recall from geometry the concept of alternate interior angles. The phrase, I suppose, doesn't really matter that much, but the point is that if this angle is 60 degrees, this angle itself will also be 60 degrees. Similarly over here, if this angle is 30 degrees, then this angle will also be 30 degrees. And the reason why the angles are so important is because we need to break our forces into their x and y components. In particular, t1 and t2 will need to be broken into their x and y components because those forces are acting at angles, if you'll notice from the picture. mg only has a y component. It's pointing straight down. It's not pointing to the left or to the right. So in other words, there is no x component for mg. There is only a y component. Now to organize the components of the forces, it's going to be useful to use a sort of table. So let's take a look at that. What we'll do is we'll organize the three forces on the left side of the table and then the x and y components along the top side. As noted, mg, because it's pointing strictly downward in the y direction, has an x component of zero. Therefore, the only component of mg is the y component. The tensions are a little bit more challenging, so let's look at T1. We'll notice that T1 has an x component that's pointing to the left, and then it has a y component that's pointing upward. Now, we know that the x component is going to be the tension T1 times the cosine of the angle, whereas the y component is going to be T1 times the sine of the angle. So we can fill those into our table. Just note that when we fill in the x component, we're going to have to actually assign a negative symbol or a negative sign to it because it's pointing to the left. T1 sine 60 is pointing upward, and so that will be positive. In a similar fashion, T2 can be broken up into an x component, which in this case points to the right, and then a y component, in this case pointing upward. The x component can be labeled t2 times the cosine of 30, and then the y component will be t2 times the sine of 30. Notice this x component is pointing to the right, and that is the positive direction, so we can keep this as a positive quantity. The y component is pointing upward, so we can also call that a positive quantity. So now that we've filled in our little force table here with the x and y components for each force, we can go ahead and take the total x component and the total y component. What that means is we just add straight down the column here and also here. Now we're not going to get a numerical result, we're going to get expressions. So let's look at the x components first and add them up. So we would have t2 cosine of 30 added to the negative t1 cosine 60. If we add a negative it's actually just subtracting the quantity. So this is the total x component forces. We're going to do something similar for the y direction. But actually, before we do that, we need to note that mg, since it was pointing downward, actually should have had a negative sign placed in front of it. So that was a crucial thing to keep in mind, that a downward-directed force must have a negative sign in front of it. So now that we take note of that, we can go ahead and add the y forces. We'll come down over here and do it because we're running out of room. So here is the full expression for the sum of the y component forces. Now, since the birdhouse is not accelerating, it's in equilibrium. And what that means is we can set the total x component forces equal to zero and also the total y component forces equal to zero. Let's clean up the workspace a bit, but we'll hang on to these two equations right here. 
Okay, so at this point, it might be useful to substitute 150 newtons in for mg. And then since we have two unknowns, we have T2 and T1, and they appear in both equations, well, we can use the technique of substitution, more of an algebraic technique than a physics technique. But basically what we can do is solve the simpler looking equation for either T2 or for T1. It doesn't really matter. So let's just arbitrarily solve for T2. And to do that, we'll add the T1 cos 60 over to the other side. And then we can divide both sides by cos 30. And now that we have that expression for T2, we can substitute it in to the other equation. Next, you could pick up your calculator and type in the sine of 60 to simplify that. And then also you're gonna have the cosine of 60 times the sine of 30, and then divided by the cosine of 30. So a couple of operations there, but let's use our calculators to simplify this equation. We can add these like terms add the 150 over, and then divide by 1.155. And T1 turns out to be about 130 newtons. So we've solved for the tension on the left end of the birdhouse. To find T2, all we need to do, of course, is substitute in this 130 newtons in for T1 over in the first equation. When you do that, you should get 75 newtons for T2. And then we can't forget the other tension, which was equal to mg, was equal to 150 newtons. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to this channel, and then stay tuned for more video solutions to commonly assigned textbook questions.